Hey guys, it's Slimy Dog here with another episode of Pokemon Speculations. In this episode, we're going to be covering quite a bit. One, we're going to be covering the E3 conference. The second thing we're going to be covering is the new Pokemon gameplay trailer. And the third is the Koro Koro leak. So, this is going to be quite a long episode. The first thing that we found out from the E3 is something called the Player Search System, PSS for short. From the name, you can obviously know that this is how you find players and battle players and a new way to basically interact with people on the 3DS. There are two ways of getting people onto your PSS. One being having them on your 3DS friend list, and the second one is meeting them anywhere on your Pokemon X and Y game. This is probably going to be there on the bottom screen at all points of time, unless you're going to the menu or in a battle, just like the Sea Gear. Passerbys are people who you meet just over Wi-Fi or LAN. Acquaintances are people who you met over Wi-Fi or LAN and did something with. They become friends if you've done at least two things with them, such as trading or battling their Pokemon. So here we have a battle between two trainers using the PSS. The first thing that we can see from here is a new Pokemon known as Clauncher. So let's look at the sprite for that Pokemon. As you can see, as expected, it's a crab type of Pokemon. I think the actual biological species of this Pokemon is called the Piston Crab, so you can check some Google images of that. Next we have another interesting new Pokemon known as Sklurp. Wow, just paused at the exact wrong moment. Here we go. S-K-R-E-L-P. Skrelp. Skrelp, sorry. This Pokemon is a water poison type. As you can see, it's a seahorse, so the water type, and it's kind of purplish, so the poison type. Another thing that I've noticed is, what's with poison type Pokemon and weird names? For example, Muck. That's a poison type Pokemon, and here we have Skrelp. I can't even pronounce that, I've been practicing for like the last one hour. Not really. So as you can see, these are the two Pokemon with their actual sprites. Here's Skrelp to the left, and Clauncher to the right. I'm probably never going to get used to those names, so I'm going to give up. Here we have the two Pokemon in battle. We see Clauncher using the move Swords Dance, which looks pretty interesting, and Skrelp using the move Sludge Bomb. Let me just replay that, because... There we go. So that's... Sludge Bomb. Now, even if they didn't give us the typing of these two Pokemon, we could probably figure it out. I mean, Clauncher obviously going to be a Water-type Pokemon, and this guy going to be a Poison-type Pokemon along with Water because it's a Seahorse, and he can use Sludge Bomb. Next, we have the trading animations. It's pretty simple. Pokemon goes inside the ball, gets transferred, then we have this battle 3D model type of thing, and the Pokemon goes out of the ball so nothing too complex there, same mechanics, same things, but it looks a lot more fluid. And also they said that trading would be improved in this game, so maybe that means you can trade multiple Pokemon at once, or, or maybe Pokemon trading is much simpler, and you can trade your Pokemon at lots of other different locations, instead of just in the Pokemon centers. And here we have the most interesting part, the two new types of battles. The first being Horde battles, which I'm going to show you here, and the second being Sky Battles, which I'm going to show you next. Now as you can see, there's a horde of Pokemon attacking you, and I don't really think there's going to be any change in the mechanics. A bunch of Pokemon really just attack you, and you attack them back. There might be a difference in the evasiveness and accuracy, but as of now we really don't have any information other than the fact that multiple Pokemon can attack you when you step into wild grass. Here we see that multiple Pokemon actually attack you, by that, I mean, not only are they in the field, but each one gets to attack you separately, which means that there's high risk and a high chance that your Pokemon might actually faint if you're not strong enough. But there's also high potential for you to get a lot more experience just by grinding, by battling a bunch of these Pokemon at once. An interesting strategy that you can use in Horde battles is basically using a move that hits all targets at the same time like Rock Slide or Surf. This basically allows you to kill all the opponents in one shot and get a bunch of experience pretty quickly. As we can see here, 
Gogo decides to use the move Rock Slide, which hits every single opponent in the field, causing collateral damage. And here we see the second type of battle, Sky Battles. When a trainer walks into an area such as this, and meets another Pokemon trainer's eyes, they have to battle. But, there's a chance that there might not be ground in front of them. So, the only possible thing to do is have a Sky Battle. Now just like double battles, I don't think you can encounter Sky Battles unless you have flying type Pokemon or Pokemon with Levitate. Why did I refer to double battles? Well, because unless you have two Pokemon in your team, you can never encounter a double battle. Also, we see an option here, which allows us to choose whether we actually want to battle this trainer or not. And here we have a few pictures of Sky Battles. From this, we see two things. One, Contra can enter a Sky Battle without being a flying type, just because it has Levitate. And two, there's a new Pokemon there. What Pokemon does that remind us of? Let's find out. That's right. It looks a lot like Fletchling. The similarities are endless. The tail, the beak, the eyes, the color scheme, the wings, every single part of it. So this Pokemon is called Talonflame, and is probably gonna evolve from Fletchling. Let's see it in battle. Now this is how Sky Battles are gonna look. There's a better quality video that I'm going to show you a little later. Also, if you look at the bottom left corner, or the bottom right corner, you'll notice that there are those circles which have the fight, run, Pokemon, and bag options. So that's pretty much how that's gonna look. So here we notice the camera angles in Pokemon Sky Battles. Nothing really too interesting. Here we see Talonflame using the move Brave Bird. That looks pretty fast, pretty amazing, powerful move. And here we have Haunter and Aerodactyl. As I said before, Haunter is not a flying type Pokemon. However, since it has the ability Levitate, it can participate in Sky Battles. Certain Dragon type Pokemon may also be able to participate in Sky Battles, even if they don't have the flying type or Levitate. So Haunter is just using a move over there. Don't really know what that is, but that doesn't really matter right now. What does matter is Pokemon Ami. Now, I told you about this in a previous video of speculations, but an interesting fact that I didn't tell you about is that the bonding mechanism actually helps in battles. By bonding more with your Pokemon, you not only probably increase their happiness, but also increase their ability to dodge attacks and increase the chances of critical hits occurring. So that's really pretty amazing, and something that I really didn't expect from Pokemon. Really good usage of new features to add to the mechanics. And here we get to the second, or rather third segment, where I will be talking about the Korra Korra leaks, which you can obviously see from here. Now the first page, at least, contains three pieces of information, which I will show you right about here. The first thing that we can see is a starting town. I showed you the same city and told you that that would be the starting town, but I never told you what name it would be. Now they've given us a name. It's called Asame Town. The video that I showed was this, basically you exiting the house and going here. And this is the place that the house, or rather the town, is going to be. If you want further information, you can probably click somewhere or just travel through my channel to find my previous speculations video and watch that where I talk about a lot of other information that's pretty interesting. The second thing that we see on this leak is these three trainers. The first one to the right is called Sana, the second to the left is called Troba, and the third is called Dierno. Now remember that these are just Japanese names, so the English names will probably come out a little later, and they'll probably have easier pronunciations. Now from these pictures, we can pretty much see that these five people are a team, and they're going to be working together, trying to figure everything out, and helping each other out. Maybe they're rivals of each other, maybe they're not, we'll have to find out. Another fact that you should know is that all of these guys are from the same town, which is Asame Town, the starting city. Here we have the male protagonist. His name is Xavier, and if you chose the female player, then her name would be Selena. So really not much interesting information to get from that, but just something that you should probably know. Here we have another image. There are two pictures of two different ladies on this. The first one on the left is called Pansy, 
and she is a journalist for a company in Lumina City. And she will be appearing in one of the anime episodes, which will apparently premiere on July 18th in Japan. The second one is Viola, who is the Hakudan City gym leader. Now, as we know, we can probably see in between the two trainers, we have this picture, which was the bug type gym picture where we fell down and got stuck in the web, so Hakudan City is probably going to be the bug type city. Now, we're still not sure whether this is the bug type city, but I really don't know any other reason for them to make it not the bug type city. You can also see that she's a photographer. Lots of trainers who are bug type trainers are artists. Remember Bugsy from the fifth generation? Here we have the next leak, which basically shows us the evolutionary stages of Vivalon. The first one on the right is Kofu Kimushi. After that, it evolves into Kofuari, and then into Vivilon. Remember, these are just the Japanese names, so you really don't have to remember how to pronounce these. Moving on. And here we see a new Pokemon. This one is called Fura Baby, and is a pure fairy type. The theory behind this Pokemon is that it latches onto a single flower, and watches it go through the evolutionary stages of, well, growing up. Now you might think, why isn't it a grass type? And I really don't have an answer to you for that. But it might evolve into grass type in a future stage, so look forward to seeing more information on this guy. We can also see in the bottom left corner a new Pokemon. Now this one is called Shishiko, and we have another page of information on him. Shishiko is a normal fire type Pokemon and has a move called Warcry. Now, I really don't know what that means, but that's pretty much all I have for today, guys. So thank you for watching this episode of Pokemon Speculations. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Share this with your friends if you want to show them some more interesting information. And expect more like this to come out. So, this is the Slimy Dog signing off. Goodbye.